How's it going? My name is Jeff and I'm a licensed occupational therapist who goes by the moniker OT Dude on social media and I guess in real life too. Today I'll be talking about occupation as a means versus end or occupations as means and end. What is this? So when I was in OT school, it kind of took me a little bit to wrap my head around it. So I'll kind of explain it in the way that I best understand it at least. It's not too complicated. And I'll go over a bunch of examples to kind of really just make you understand, drill home the point of what that is. Because, well, why care? This is actually a pretty important concept aside from like knowing what occupation is and what occupational therapy is. How you approach occupation as a means and end is kind of like a pretty broad and overarching, I guess, approach to how you actually do the actual part of occupational therapy. But before we even get into the means and end part, we should ask ourselves, really, what is the definition of occupation, right? Because in the early days of occupation, things like craft activities were used really more of like a diversion. So there weren't really as much of a focus, I guess, on purpose and meaning. It was kind of like a distractor, like a busy kind of activity. Nowadays, we don't really, or at least we're not supposed to use occupational therapy as more of like a diversion. But for me, I define occupation as really what one does that is meaningful or purposeful to them. And in the OTPF4, the Occupational Therapy Practice Framework 4 by the AOTA, occupation is defined as a personalized and meaningful engagement in one's daily life events, sort of paraphrasing that anyways. So basically the key theme, I guess I want you guys to really understand is that it's personalized. So therefore, Occupation is unique to one individual. An example is like, oh, I don't know, shopping. Like shopping for me, like going with like my wife shopping may not be the same type of shopping that she derives meaning from. Some people may find shopping like leisurely, for example. It's very individualized. So you can't take something like an activity like, oh, I don't know, playing a guitar and apply occupation as a means and an end to it. So what does that really mean then? I think occupation as an end is pretty easy to kind of remember end being the end goal or the end purpose. So going back to, oh, I don't know, guitar, for example, right? If I want to learn how to play the guitar, then occupation as an end means that my goal is to do the things that I want to do in therapy that are in line or in accordance or the in preparation for me to play guitar. So let's say I had, oh, I don't know, weak fine motor skills or poor coordination or poor attention or even living mental health. Like I have, like I'm depressed or even pain, right? So therefore as an occupational therapist, when they're doing treatment planning, they would plan the things that they, that would help the patient to achieve the ultimate goal of the end of playing the guitar. So that could be like really bottom up, I guess, like a bottom up approach of like things like finger strengthening or warming up like to sit in a chair for a long time or even standing and playing guitar or remembering like notes on how to read sheet music. So then using that same example, occupation as a means, think of means as like by any means necessary, like how you do something or like by means of. So it's how you get from point A to point B. So it's basically the actual doing of things. So therefore, maybe you could use playing a guitar or something as a means. You can use that activity of like strumming and like going with the beat of the music, playing chords or like reading sheet music, which teaches you how to like read and like focus and work on your visual skills. But that is not necessarily the end, end goal of it. It's like the goal is maybe like, well, the client ha likes to play guitar, but maybe for example, their underlying like main diagnosis or purpose for going to therapy is maybe they're depressed or maybe they want to socialize with others, like go and play in a band or like just be really active out in the community. So then they use playing a guitar as a means and the end goal is something entirely different, like socializing, or it could be monetary, like, or maybe like you're a musician and you've lost the ability to work. So you're using occupation of playing the guitar as a means, 
and then the end goal may or may not be the same. And so, for example, if you're a professional guitar player, then the end would probably be, in this case, to play the guitar like live or at a gig or something. So this is where the lines kind of blur, where you hear it's occupations versus means. I think of it as and. And that's the beauty of occupational therapy, right? We use the actual activity or occupation as therapy, as a means, but why not treat it as an end? So that's where you can kind of get like meta, so to speak. And it's like, well, where's the distinction between the means and then the end? Because it's not like a hard line, right? It's kind of like a continuum. So that's the kind of the beauty. So using my guitar example, it's like, why not use the guitar as a means to act ultimately play the guitar better? Whether that be to make money or for leisure or to socialize or for mental health or whatever. So let's use some other examples. Okay, I have on the list here food. So food as a means would be like actually eating food. So if your goal is, for example, to be nourished and be able to relive your life and you have like a really poor like diet, you're just really out of shape, then like, I mean, physicians ask this all the time, right? Like, are you eating your, how many servings of like veggies are you eating? How many, like, do you like drink alcohol? Right. So it's like, what's your diet like, right? So then if you're using like working with an occupational therapist with food, then you're working on like choosing lifestyle choices. And then the ultimate goal could be like overall health or something like that. Uh, similarly, it could be, maybe someone has like a physical deficit, right? Like with food, they are unable to maybe like bring food to their mouth, right? So occupation as means is like you're working, using feeding and eating as an activity to basically use it for self-feeding. And then the end goal is maybe to do that so that you can work on other things and have be energized. So then again, the lines can kind of blur, right? So, well. Why not just eat just to eat, right? Maybe like, for example, some people find satisfaction from eating. Like for me, probably my, one of my guilty pleasures is food, right? So that's food. Sleep. Okay. This one is kind of like a, maybe a trickier one to think of in terms of means and end, but let's say you're just not getting really good sleep. You're really sleep deprived and just, you have really poor sleep hygiene. So sleep as a means would be using sleep and getting enough sleep and working on that intervention to do something else, which is having energy or being more rested, or just like number one reason why people like stay in bed and do bed rest is to get, feel better, right? To recovery. So it's like sleep as a means to recovery. Conversely, well, what is sleep as an end goal? So that means think of someone like with insomnia, like they're just unable to sleep and they're like just missing not getting like, for example, eight hours of sleep. So that is the ultimate goal. So then what are the things that you can work towards that? Well, thinking holistically, it could be like sleep hygiene in itself, like we're addressing things like adjusting the environment or like, like putting up blackout curtains or something, right? That has nothing really to necessarily do with sleep per se, but that's an occupation as a means, like adjusting the environment and modifying it so that one can ultimately get uh, sleep. So the mod environmental modification part being the means part for sleep. And then the end goal is like, well, have someone do like a sleep tracking log, for example. And then right when they wake up in the morning, they write down how much sleep they've gotten. And then over the long period, you can track the before and after, before the intervention and then after the intervention. And if they're getting more restful sleep, like self-reported, then they worked on that end goal of sleep. Okay. Another example, exercise. This is a pretty easy one to understand. I don't know why I didn't start with this, but a lot of times when you think of exercise, that's a means, right? You're using exercise to do something and that's overall health and wellness and to get better. Well, some people think of instead of that as a means, it's the end. So I want to be able to do an exercise. So think of something like, I don't know, like a marathon, like you want to be able to run a marathon and achieve a certain like distance, right? So then you're working on things, maybe from like a, again, maybe a bottom up perspective to work towards that uh, end goal of being able to reach a certain amount of exercise, like uh, like a run a mile or something. So then how would you work towards that as a means? Well, that can be anything. You can work on someone holistically, right? So improve their sleep, their diet, and like their main, maintaining their side effects from like medications or symptoms. And those are the means part. Okay, another one, ADL of, let's talk about sexual activity. So, well, oh, Jeff, how can that be a means and an end? Okay, think about 
occupations as a means. So sexual activity, maybe someone is using that, using that to do something else as an end goal. So if you think like kind of like more broadly, maybe it's like intimacy with a partner and that's the end goal for sexual activity and like bonding or even more, I guess even more biological is like to procreate, right? To like, um, yeah, procreate and conceive. So using sexual activity is like someone is important to someone and they want to work on that because they have lost the ability to do that. Maybe they have like performance anxiety or physical deficits, like um, being, being able to maintain the endurance, such as like after a cardiac uh, condition. So then you're using sexual activity or at least providing therapy to them with it, um, with like their partner so that they can reach the end goal of ultimately, uh, end goal of being to conceive. So then maybe you can think about sexual activity as an end goal, like something entirely different. Maybe someone who hasn't like had sex in a while and that's their end goal. Like I want to have sex as an end goal. Well, what are some things that you can work towards that? Well, you can build someone's confidence, like psycho psychosocially, you can build their like, uh, physical ability and improve upon it. Like working from again, like a bottom up perspective, you can address the holistic part again. You can maybe work, help coach them through or work through their insecurities. So that's sexual activity. And I was going to go over playing a sport, but I think that kind of is really, nah, I can go over real quick. Let's say like using, oh, I don't know, playing basketball, right? The, someone's means could be using basketball to work on someone's like coordination or something like a kid, you're working with pediatrics. You can work on dribbling to work on gross and gross motor skills, balance, visual perception, by manual activities, alternating like left, right, like hand coordination. So that's the means part working on like very bottom up. And then, and goal is like, if a patient or client came up to you and said, Hey, like, I really want to play basketball again, then you could approach it with the means and use other things to reach the end goal of means. But again, the beauty of occupational therapy is it's well, why kind of find a distinction or separate it? Why not just use playing basketball and practicing it? to ultimately reach the goal of playing basketball, right? So I talked about shopping as well. Uh, and then the last example I wanted to go talk about is maybe going to school, right? So let's say college education. So the means would be being able to, let's say someone has like difficulty concentrating like with ADHD or something and, or even just a pediatric and think about like school OT. So you're working on all these things as a means while they are in school to reach other goals. So like why do kids go to school? It's so that they have, you know, like life skills or to get a degree or to build like their confidence psycho psychologically or to socialize. Right. So you can think about that as an end goal. So maybe someone wants to go back to school and that is their goal. So what, what are the means to work on school and education? Well, it could be the things to work up towards that. So if someone is in like, for example, you're working with someone like with severe pain and they don't even think they can like sit for any period, they can't concentrate because they're always in pain. Then you would address that underlying like symptom of pain, like such as chronic pain and overcoming that pain so that they can actually go and do among other things to ultimately the end goal of going back to school. So last, I want to leave you with, well, treatment planning. What do you do as like a occupational therapy, like student intern or like at field work or even for your clinicians? Like, well, how should I think about this concept of means and end? Really, I don't think there is any wrong answer. And the examples I did, I kind of explained it like for the means part from like a very bottom up approach, but really like anything, it's best to approach it from a top down as well, top down approach and look at things holistically in their whole life picture and their whole occupation using whatever model you want, like PEO, MOHO, or I mean, if you don't even use a model, like just really like what they really want to do and holistically, it's really individual to them. So you do want to think about things like their personal context, their age, their gender, their interests, their background, social economic status, prior uh, like conditions, or the current conditions, what's their family dynamics like, right? Social context. And also their environment, what's their environment? Like, are they in like an environment that is conducive to that? And really thinking about that so that when you apply your occupations as a means and then the end, you 
in hopes are able to make sure that they can generalize it into their own environment and, and so that it can also persist over the long term, not just short term gains and like short term goals, but really long term goals. So one thing I have been a really big fan of is like one of the concepts from ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy. And then what that is, is one of the main concepts is values. What does one person really value in their life? Because one's goals can be met, but the beauty about values is they're really constant and they're really like, really give someone meaning in addition to one's goals. And when you have certain values and you consider this and you ask the client what their real true values are in doing things in therapy, then you can kind of go backwards and think about goals and then work from there. And then going backwards even more, you can then think about what you want to do for the occupation. And is it, do you want to use it as the actual means? Do you want to use it as an end? Do you want to use some combination of it? So it all really depends. There's no straight answer to that. And it depends on each client. Anyways, hope this helps explain occupations as a means and end. I'm going to make, maybe make some more videos with some other examples in addition to that. I just thought of these in the top of my head. They may not be the greatest, but hopefully some of these really resonate with you and you identify that and it can help you remember. So thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jeff. I'm the OT Dude. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. I also have a website, otdude.com, with a newsletter for practice areas and occupational therapy for you to subscribe to. And all this content is free. So thanks for watching and thanks for support.